Most people are probably familiar with the word fat, and yet they still have limited knowledge about it. Fat's reputation is pretty bad compared to its peers, carbs and protein. The word itself is often associated with scary terms, things like obesity and heart disease. But fat itself is not inherently bad for us. In fact, it's required by our bodies in order to maintain a good and healthy life. Thus, it might raise a question then. If fat is all nice and dandy, how come so many people avoid it? To answer this, we must first know what fat truly is. Most fat is present in the form of triglycerides. As the name suggests, it is made of glycerol and free fatty acids. The structure of these fatty acids determine the property of fat, whether it is solid or liquid, and more importantly, whether it's good or bad. Triglycerides that only has a single bond is called a saturated fat, while a triglyceride that is both single and double bonds is called unsaturated fat. The general consensus is that most unsaturated fat is good for us, while excessive consumption of saturated fat is bad for us. Even unsaturated fat is composed of another subcategory depending on its configuration. Cis means that hydrogen atoms are on the same side of the double bond, whereas trans means that hydrogen atoms are on the opposite side of the double bond. The subtle yet distinct difference distinguishes them apart. Trans fat might be the reason why fat is viewed badly in general, as this trans fat is proven to be related to an increased risk for heart disease, while its counterpart, cis unsaturated fat, promotes low risk of heart disease. But did you know that trans fat actually has an interesting history? In the 1980s, people thought that trans fat was actually good for us. Some studies have linked saturated fat to heart disease and other health problems. Therefore, health organizations began pressuring restaurants to limit their use of saturated fats. And guess what? Food industries actually replaced the usage of saturated fat with trans fat. Luckily, 10 years later, another study conducted by Harvard found that consuming high amounts of trans fat doubled the risk of heart disease and people went crazy about it again. The movement was so massive that FDA implemented that rule in 2006 and the New York City became the first U.S. city to ban trans fat in restaurants. The popularity of trans fats quickly depleted over the following years and eventually in 2015, the FDA officially banned the use of trans fats in food industries. However, because of the fear trans fats have caused, people have gone as far as to start making fat substitute, which is known as Olistra. Olistra is a zero-calorie commercial fat substitute with the look and feel of natural fats. However, it is not digestible like typical fat. It instead passes through the digestive tract unchanged and thereby adds no calories to the diet. This sounds like an actual miracle, except for the fact that it actually carries fat-soluble vitamins away and causes digestive issues. In order to bypass the zero trans fat protocol made by the government while fulfilling the need for a kind of fat that is both more durable and healthier, food industries have to use alternatives, namely blending, fractionation, and interesterification. Interesterification is basically a process that results in the production of a modified fat that has enhanced properties of the original without changing its composition. This method produces cis unsaturated fat, or what we call good fat with the property of saturated fat. However, it doesn't mean that you can eat products containing this kind of fat as much as you like. Excessive amounts of interesterification fat will still give you an increased risk for cardiovascular disease. Aside from trans fats, other unsaturated fats are still essential for our health. As a rule of thumb, the World Health Organization recommends that 30% of our total energy consumption should come from fats. Then overall, fat is not all that bad. It's the kind of fat you eat, not the term itself, that matters. And thus, it's important for us to choose the kind of fat to consume. Remember, we need fat in certain amounts for our health because one of the keys for a healthy lifestyle is a balanced diet. Fat is not the enemy, so let's embrace the fats.